What's the haps? I'm Maroka, and today I'm going to give you my professional gaming opinion on Space Otter Charlie. In the near future, humanity has bollocksed up Earth enough that they just up and leave one day to find somewhere cooler and less crowded. Far easier than fixing your mistakes, am I right fellow humans? The sea otters aren't too stoked about either living on a sweaty planet or cleaning up after the humans, so they decide to get out as well, thus paving the way for this odd conceit about you being an otter in a spacesuit. It's fundamentally a kind of puzzle platform shooter, albeit one that's not all that fussed about bothering with gravity, giving you a slightly different take on the whole platform thing. Our adorable furry friend Charlie must drift through the wrecks of spaceships and space stations to find all the resources his team needs to get them to their new home. You start merely with magnetic boots, allowing you to stick to any surface and launch yourself across the room in accordance with Newton's first law, remaining in motion until acted on by the wall at the far side. Which, as a mechanic, is quite cool. I dig this a lot. It feels to me like it has a lot of potential in its own right. 30 seconds later, the game gives you a jetpack and ruins it. I say this with all the tragic sincerity it deserves. It is the only time I have been disappointed to be given a jetpack. I feel like this is deserving of its own law. Maroka's second law video games. A jetpack is only cool when you have gravity. The moment you get the jetpack, the game immediately takes on more of an underwater vibe rather than a zero-g vibe. Which, I guess, obviously, otters and all. They train astronauts underwater, right? It doesn't diminish the fact that the breakneck speed between being given a fun new toy and the next fun new toy completely devaluing it gave me whiplash. And it does diminish the boots. One moment, everything is a platform to stand on, but you have to plan your movements carefully because you won't be able to stop once you start moving. Which is an excellent fundamental premise for a puzzle platformer. And then the next moment you can go anywhere freely and all those interesting platforms are really just boundaries to keep you where the game is. You can absolutely still stand on and launch off of them, but you don't have to think about it. Whoops, you've gone the wrong way. Jetpack! You get given a blaster to fight off a rogue AI hell-bent on wiping out all rodents, which you'd think would be fine as an otter isn't a rodent. The humans had a rat problem, you see, and decided machine learning was the way to go. There's an app for everything. But the boffins at future Google DeepMind exterminators couldn't get it to tell the difference between rats and otters. I gotta confess to never having filled out a capture asking me to pick out all the otters. So the AI becomes our problem now. Armed with sticky boots, jetpack and laser, you are salvaging through space junk, fighting enemies, dodging hazards, and pressing many, many switches. As you go, you'll pick up a lot of collectibles, which you can use to craft upgrades occasionally. There's two extra guns, a bouncing shot laser and a rocket launcher, which both have their uses. There's a spinny dash move reminiscent of a thing the characters could do in a comic strip I wrote when I was eight because I was eight and was just ripping off Sonic the Hedgehog like a deeply uncreative eight-year-old. You can craft yourself extra health, which is kind of nice, but mildly pointless since checkpoints are frequent and dying respawns you back there for no penalty with plenty of health again. It's incredibly forgiving in that sense. There's a number of different spacesuits you can make, mostly very silly ones, which all grant you a special extra weapon. Something I discovered completely by accident because I'm quite sure the game doesn't tell you the suits come with weapons. They're all completely optional, but can often be quite useful. You can also unlock bonus side missions, which upgrade your main weapons. Again, totally optional, but nice to have. Some boss fights sprinkle throughout keep things interesting. They're certainly some of the more fun parts of the game, though I'm sorry to say I found much of the rest of it far less engaging. Press switches, shoot robots, drift through corridors, it's a whole lot of the same stuff. No, no, I tell a lie, there's not even a whole lot of it. It was four hours end to end for me and that's even including side mission diversions to get some of the upgrades. Which is in itself weird, because it left me simultaneously feeling glad that it didn't overstay its welcome, yet also thinking, huh, was that it? I'm not sure how to reconcile these things, yet coexist they did. The difficulty curve is more of a difficulty wall. After four basically straightforward missions, as you're picking up new toys to get to grips with, they slam you straight into what is very obviously the final level. It's long, branching, comparatively very challenging, and ends with you piloting a planet-sized mech through space. Which, while it does manage to be quite cool, is actually mechanically identical except for a fresh lick of paint. There's also a weird thing where you collect energy as you complete levels. Then can use that energy to beam up characters to your ship. They're all different aquatic-ish creatures, and they all have names and job titles. You think, ah, these folks are here to provide upgrades or something, they'll make my life better. They don't. They appear on your ship and provide a minuscule snippet of dialogue. 
And I guess they show up in the end credits to give people a shout out. That's it. You're going out of your way to collect stuff to upgrade the end credits. Which, unless I'm wildly mistaken, sounds like it means that some of the people who contributed to the game won't actually get credited every time. Finally, there's also a local multiplayer mode, which I didn't look at, because honestly, who actually cares about local multiplayer on PC? Space Otter Charlie feels like a swing and a miss for me. It's undeniably a super cute style, which is all the hook I need to grab my attention, and it's £11.39, or your regional equivalent, putting it squarely in the I won't lose too much sleep over this if I don't enjoy it territory, even more so when Steam inevitably digs deep into its bag of discounts. But it's just chronically forgettable. It's neither good enough nor bad enough that I won't remember it in a month's time. And arguably, that might be worse. Massive thanks to my lovely channel members for supporting what I do here. If you'd like to see your name in the credits too, you can become a member by hitting the join button below. And if you enjoyed this video, you can show your support by hitting the like button. And if you didn't, show your frustration by hitting the dislike button. That's cool too. Either way, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.